to Cinema Talk, where I talk to online personalities and get to know them on a deep personal level. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and you know what? T- today's guest is our 10th guest. This is the 10th person I interviewed today. Not today, but in general. It is uh, Daniel Swallow, a.k.a. Sonic Guru. Hello, and thanks for ha- having me. Honestly, I'm quite surprised you asked me for an interview. I've just wanted to get to know everybody online and i've been watching your videos you're pretty uh pretty knowledgeable about sonic so i wanted to get Mm. into your head a little bit well that's why i'm called sonic guru uh so everybody everybody knows that you're friends with michael kimpton and Mm. let's just get right into the scoop here how did you two meet to be honest i don't remember I really is. It's, it, I know when we became really get, getting good friends is when I was invited to his birthday party um, in 1998, March 98 to be precise. It was, it was like it was. He was part of, of a football team, which honestly I don't think he actually enjoyed doing. It was just it's extra, extra curricular activities. And his mom said, well, asked my mom, it's like, hey, yeah, Mike's friends with, dad, dad's friends with Mike, do you want to you know, invite him over for a sleepover as well as a little birth- birthday party? Went, yeah, why not? I Mike's told me he could, Mike has a memory of a fucking elephant. <laughs> and I really, I, I honestly, I don't remember jumping up on, on it, actually tackling him. <laughs> I really don't. The way he puts it, it sounds like I just saw, like, New kid, right? Fucking rugby tackle, a bastard. <laughs> I do, I do, I honestly do not remember doing that. <laughs> I'm gonna take Mike's word for it, considering he, he has a great fucking memory. Yeah. I does. just, I just, I just know from ever since his birthday onwards that like, we've been good, good friends. Yeah. So, uh, how did you guys end up making videos together and making VG Bros? Um, I that was the first episode of VG Bros. I think we just, just discovered the video setting on a cam on the digital camera and thought, hey, we can make the VG Bros thing we've been talking about. And I do think it was like kind of it. It did start from a tenacious D shorts because I bought the DVD because I it was like just like half a year or maybe a year after I saw. No, it was, a, it was like, yeah, it was 2008. It was like the Tenacious D movie, like a Destiny came out. Mm-hmm. I saw that instead of watching Jackass. Because yeah. I didn't have any idea at the time. I couldn't watch Jackass. I thought, fuck it. I'll watch Tenacious D instead. So I was a a ten- bit, becoming a bit of a Tenacious D fanboy. So I got the complete masterworks and it had the HBO specials. And I kind of stem from there but also a big influence was an old flash series called the decline of video gaming um by the super flash bros and a couple of their friends so it's like let's do like a live action version of this but we can't really go over all the special effects because it's just me, me him and a camera we eventually got uh, some other friends into it like episode three onwards Episode four onwards, episode three was something different. And now since then, it's just like kind of it, not the same as it, what it once was, but eventually BG Bros. Just became it's just four guys, situational comedy, and there's video games involved. All right, cool, cool. So you eventually went solo and making your own videos. What this is interesting about you. you're the Sonic Guru, you're the expert in Sonic. So, how did you get into Sonic? Like, what was the video game that started you on Sonic and just blew you away with it. Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on Sega Master System. I did a, I did a review on it uh, two months ago. Yeah, okay. it, it, it's the one game I always come back to. It, it was... Again, I haven't got a best memory, but I just remember like one day my brother was playing a Sega Master System. I really wanted to play it. But I think... I think his birthday is like two days, like three days before mine. We were both born, born, born in November, but he was born the ninth. I was born the twelfth. Yeah. Well, I call, I call, I call it Val- Valentine's babies because it's exactly nine months after Valentine's Day. Hmm. So, 
I think he got like a hand me down master system with Sonic. I wanted to play it, so I couldn't play it until my birthday, which was back in '93, I think. Again, don't quote me on that. Uh, ever, ever since then, it's like, oh, they're saying, oh, let's say Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, there's a Sonic 2. Oh, there's a cartoon. When, when the hell has this happened? <laughs> so, why is Sonic so compelling as a video game franchise and a character? I don't know. I think at the time, it's just like it was something completely new. Like, we seen, like, I guess the original human hero. So, like, oh, hey, it's a animal and it's colors blue and really fast and it's got an attitude i think it's to how different it was compared to mario which was all all arranged but even in america it was all arranged in the uk it's like i don't know it's like it seemed like it's it's easy to think of but hard to say why i find it so compelling i think i'm so used to the fact i don't really think about me being a fan it's just something that it's always been with. It's like a piece of childhood. Hmm. So, how did you begin making videos about Sonic? How did that whole process of creating a channel, creating your videos, make yourself a brand as a Sonic Guru? Um. Well, firstly, the name Sonic Guru is basically, it's just, I didn't want to be called Sonic Know-It-All or Sonic Master. It seemed too, too, too pretentious. And the name Guru just seems to roll off the tongue. Mm -hmm. That's the story behind the name. It's just, it, I wanted to be a Sonic Know-It-All, but Guru sounded better than Master. Then, uh, originally the YouTube channel is just basically like any of YouTube channels. It's just, it's a new site that's just upload any any old shit. First one was, my first one was basically a history of Zelda, and it's just a bunch of screenshots. It's still up. Um, eventually, I don't know, it's like, I think it was like some time after Mike was doing VG Retro, and I think he'd like a few episodes in, I was like, I want to do my own reviews, because everyone was doing them. Mm -hmm. It's like, and uh, I initially planned out like 10 reviews I was going to do the, in 2010, but after like three months, I didn't. I didn't stick to that. I just did whatever I wanted to do. But if, I think it initially started with me uh, really wanting to uh, describe and tell people what is potentially the top five 3D Sonic games. So, since a lot of people seem to focus on the one bad one at the time, or two if you count Shadow the Hedgehog. And eventually it just became me reviewing games or me doing whatever and um, now it's not only just reviews but also sonic theories let's plays editorials uh it's more like a brand of my of myself like how john tron or peanut butter gamer has basically their name is their brand or even game grumps for that matter mm, okay and i think it's just something that it's just something like a hobby that evolved into what it is now mm. all right of course i should always ask this but it's always part of the same story it's like how did you get on mr coat and friends um initially i think before mike mike's vg retro was on the site uh stefan actually messaged me on youtube saying how he really loves the VG Bros, and he wants that on he wants that series on his on his site. And he introduced Blip, which we all kind of easily forgot by now. Yeah. And back then, it's like I think it was on YouTube. I didn't want to actually create a new account just to have VG Bros on. So then she decided, you know, let's make a make this a new account, share the, share the info, so when we upload upload new episodes, we can do it. And and that's pretty much it. It's like uploaded all the episodes onto Blip, and every new every new one would get a simultaneous re release on both de on I'm about to say Daily Motion then um, Blip and YouTube. And the then argument was between us about the episodes is which because Mike was uploading at the same time, which channel to upload load it to. I figured mine since I start I started with the series of 
but like short special ones he would upload but eventually it's just like upload to both our channels since it's both of us hmm. all right because um it's just interesting how all you guys got all together I'll, I'm, I'm trying to interview everybody from mr cohen friends so just like it's usually the same story it's like oh he asked me on to put my videos on here simple as that donkey donkey donk yeah pretty much there's <laughs> I think it was just talent, talent finding. It's just like, uh, I guess he actually came across our videos or at least Mike's reviews and realized mine, mine and Mike's series together that he brought our talent. And from that VG Bros, I, I messaged him saying, look, I'm going to move my own review series, pretty much kind of opposite of Mike, which became not an opposite at all. By I will review current or last gen games, whereas Mike will review retro games. And eventually that kind of dropped down when I reviewed Crash Bandicoot 2. Mm. Out of all the, all the videos you make, what was your favorite video to make? Like, you had... The script was great, you made it so well. What was your favorite out of the bunch? Oh, God. I really don't know. There's... There's ones I'm actually proud I've done, um, like reviewing Dust at Elysian Tale and Bioshock 2. Like those is like when I took took my writing very seriously. Like this is one I want to convey what I'm saying. So those are those I'm proud to do. Um, as far as production of getting everything out, I think it's I really don't know. Because every single one I can look back on and go, what the fuck did I do that for? Exactly. I, I guess one of the most proudest moments is when I was um, still in the first year reviewing, when I was doing reviewing four games in one video, and just ad libbing. Eventually, I just came to a point where I just, you know what, I just ad lib ad lib a few things, and that's usually when most of my comedy comes comes into play. What are your like, like comedy influences? I know. You and Mike are like um, have a lot of influences between each other. Yeah, I mostly blame him for the first influence, which is a show called The Young Ones. Yep. It's it's at Rick Mail at Emerson, which then that became Bottom, and just a lot of that physical humor and just sarcasm, and also the innu innuendos. I mean, it's kind of hard to. Morgan can attest to this. It's hard to actually have a conversation without quoting bottom, and from that quote, we then go through the rest of the episode. Oh man! I could say, he might could, Mike could be say, for example, Mike could be saying something, and I can go, ah, I see your point. And his reply was, why are my trousers falling down? No, I don't like No, I don't see the rope. Oh, I see your point. Why are my trousers falling down? And we can go on for the rest of the scene like that. Morgan will not stop laughing. Well, that's the thing, too, because that was one of the big uh, highlights, you know, of recent is uh, Morgan actually coming to see you. And yeah, that was Morgan's second trip down to visit me. That's right. I remember the first time, actually, too. That's right. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. You should talk about it, actually. What? How was it like working with Morgan for the first time when he came the first time around? It was weird because it's like I had to describe really. I mean, a lot of people can easily test it saying, oh, it's just like online dating. You talk to someone for a while and you go meet them in person. It's just like, right. Um, I guess it's kind of the same feeling. It's like we've known Morgan for like a couple of years since then. We all, we previously had a collab on the guest house cat paradiso review mm -hmm. and in person this is it's a lot more lot more wild than i thought it's, just, it's like everything like when we have like skype calls it's like he's a bit bit, bit manic but not as manic as me and mike will drag on for 15 minutes <laughs> but it, it was great great to hang, hang around it's just um the only downside is just like one one like one afternoon, me and Sarah were just uh, just having a, just a lazy afternoon. It's like I'm playing my game. Sarah is on Guy Online, 
and he was kind of upset that we weren't doing anything like going out somewhere I guess that's, that's the only negative thing I could say about that visit but I, could, I understood I understood why it's just it's like Morgan's down all the way from Massachusetts in Florida we're not doing anything and the next next day before we left, we were like, you know what, let's go somewhere. Let's go to the arcade. We keep driving past. What that, what's that like? That was a fun arcade. I've never played skee ball before, but that was fun. Mm-hmm. What, for the people listening in, what was that project that you guys were working on for the first time around? What was that video involved? What was that for? Uh, the vi- video was called, video was for the Disney XD sponsored, it was Ma- Maker Studios sponsored by Disney XD. And basically, you were given a thousand dollars to make a proof of concept or a prototype for a show to air on Disney XD. Um, I did the initial put initial um, pitch for them, and they really liked it. So they gave me the grant, which I was quite surprised. Even my PayPal was surprised, saying, uh, "You earn too much money right now. What the fuck is this?" <laughs> and I had to tell them, "Look, look, it's fine." It's from Disney. It's fine. So, spend, get that, get green screen, get Morgan down here. And eventually, uh, the pitch I put forward was a show I dubbed Justin's Home Movies about a, a young young teen wanting to be a film director or a jack of all trades, writer, actor, and director. And he put several stuff online has a friend who keeps pitching him wild ideas to a point where they're practically impossible even with Spielberg and a fangirl of one of his gothic vampire films and the thing thing about and put it all together it came out really well Mike's contribution was um, he did some art cards for me which I did, did a small animation for which is which is pretty pretty fun. We set put it finalized it, put it all together, sent it to Disney. No reply for months on end, and new emails coming saying we extended the deadline, we extended the deadline. Uh, one reply back saying you have to fix the audio, and also can you actually get younger actors? And it's like fuck off. It's a proof of concept, and it's not gonna be perfect. Plus, I don't I'm not gonna hire young kids to do this. Rather have it people I'm actually you know trustworthy and I know who can actually you know know how to act albeit somewhat convincingly and eventually it got to a point where they completely dropped it altogether dropped the, they dropped the project it was a complete waste of time and I had to get some info from Guru Larry about the whole thing uh, eventually this club they changed during that during that um, uh, event they changed change management teams or, or something so the whole thing just went one way and everyone else went the other and eventually it's just like huh we had a grand we got amazon prime for a year that was fun yeah that was that was fun i was like watching i was like wow it's really good it was like good all around yeah it's like it was several people even had a 10 year old watch it um it was one of my friend um Junior Kryle's um, nephew watched it, and he said he wanted to see more. So I got a thumbs up from a kid. Yeah, that's something. Um, so the second time around, Morton comes back, and now he's not only coming back for the second time to see you and Sarah, but he's seen Michael Kimpton for the first time. So how was that experience compared to the first they time? Would not, they would not <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> we... Will, we... <laughs> Me and Sarah wanted to show them an episode, a show called Cutthroat Kitchen. Oh, okay, which, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That was, that was a fun show to watch. It's like, hey, professional chefs, only have, six, only have a small amount of time to get ingredients and then get sabotaged by the opponents and have to do ridiculous things in order to pre- make a plate of food. It's fun to watch and it's fun to see all the banter. We want to, want to show them that. They were not paying attention. They were talking <laughs> the entire time. It wasn't until the judge came out, it had to be Mark frickin' Summers. Did I just say, hey, it's the guy from Double Dare. <laughs> and eventually in the last round, they actually had, actually had a Double Dare scenario. And that got their attention. But after that, they would not stop talking. They were talking about films, talking about animation. God, it was like, 
It's like me, like ah, I can't even describe it. It's it's like a it's like a first date to them. Oh man! It was, it was cute, but kind of a noise. It's like you here to visit me, <laughs> and me. Oh, they, they, they see out of everything. They really tired me out. I I had to take a nap during one of the days they were here. <laughs> I I don't take naps. I rarely take a nap, and they forced me to take a nap. Wow. <laughs> it was bizarre. I become an old man overnight. Oh man, that's just hilarious. And uh but then you guys then you guys end up going seeing a, a movie on that particular, you know, trip vacation. Oh uh, yeah. In the same day we saw well, me and Sarah went with Mog and the mic and we all saw Fan and Dory, which funny story, when we in went to this went to the actual um screen, they showed a bunch of M and M rated show trailers, like the infiltrator is like, okay, I like Brian Cranston, but this is not what you show up before finding Dory. <laughs> and eventually, the the movie Central Intelligence died playing. It's like, are we in the wrong one? No, nope, it says finding Dory outside. Morgan went to him and said, "Look, you put the wrong film on." I know a kid's in that theater. <laughs> oh my god. They were exposed to a CGI-faced Dwayne Johnson singing in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. And later that day, um, me and Sarah were just tired. Like we're an old married couple now, apparently. And they, we dropped them off to see the BFG and we went back home two and a half hours later we're like okay where it should be ending by now we drove up we're like where the fuck are they it's like we became parents during their visit <laughs> yeah it's just I think that's what it is because you know you're they're visiting you and you guys and you just have to look after them you know they're visiting you hanging out and now you know what it feels like to be a parent <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not, I should joke about that because you guys were trying to conceive yeah. and it, it, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, because um, so uh, here, here's another story you can tell. Uh, how did you um, meet Sarah? How did you meet Sarah and, and end up dating and, and eventually marrying her down the line? Uh, First, it was just this introduction as she became like a stand-in voice actor for eventually cancelled but not cancelled, dead but not dead, probably dead right now, um, audio drama of Mike's uh, comic called Tales of Putyra. Mm. And she was in, she was funny enough, she was supposed to be a stand-in for Princess Sarah, the character, which is kind of funny really, consider it, considering her character was Sarah. Uh, she managed up, and she has the relationship with Daniel. Sarah married Daniel in real life. Uh, it's, it's just kind of funny. Yeah. And and she, it's like nothing really there. So it's like she's a friend of Morgan's, and she started talking to me, say asking about the Mister Cut Awards, and this was back in 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, then she was just like a few days later, we started talking a lot more and just joking, and. She, she was no feelings at the time, but she considered me her rival because I could draw better than her. <laughs> so that's a great way. How did mommy? How did mommy and daddy meet? Well, she thought my she thought my art was better than hers, and she hated me. What a great romance! Da 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 da. -da. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna lie to him anyway. I'll, I'll learn, I'm learning art from the show How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> all right, all right, cool, cool. Uh, eventually, it's just after it's like we we previous previous relationships. We both had long distance relationships beforehand. Uh, mine was just weird, but I'm not gonna go into that. Hers was just a complete asshole. Uh, eventually, it was just like you know what, might as well might as well start might as well start going now. It's like if you're you're gonna look back and think, what would have happened differently if we said no? And since then, it's just been. 
one long, long, long wait just for a fucking visa. Uh, eventually, we got together. Uh, about ten months later, I visited her in Flor in Florida. Best two weeks of my fucking life. And eventually, like a year later, it's like you know what I want to marry her. So originally planned to leave on Oct on October that year. Turns out you can't get a visa when you're in the country you want to actually live in, you have to get the visa prior. Hmm. Which surprisingly a lot of people have been trying to be do anyway. The actual arrival come to a, a country without a visa saying you're gonna get a visa in the country. Apparently a lot of people do that, I never knew that. And after that it's like two, well year and four months waiting for a fucking visa, waiting for that yes. I felt I felt like um, Tom Selleck in an innocent man. <laughs> the way he actually gets his he gets his hair in and he's like, Yeah, you're free to go. Yes <laughs> He felt like doing that, but you know what? It's like you know what, I'm British and I'll wait until I get home. So Okay. What do you have do you have any advice for people who have long distance relationships? Have a lot of trust and a lot of faith and do anything you can to keep the relationship going even if like even says that the biggest hurdle for me and her was a big time difference between eastern standard time and greenwood mean time it's like five hours mm -hmm. so by the time it's like midnight in eastern time it's five in the morning in the uk so is that also a big adjustment? You, we it was actually really really fun when it's actually daylight savings time, but then because it arrives different times in both zones, so for like a week there's like four hour difference. So aside from adjusting to the time and setting plans, it's also have date nights as well. Just you know, like, she'll have a meal, I'll have a meal with us both. Download a, movie, download a movie and play it watching it together while eating our dinner it's a, it's a fun little thing to do and it's also keep talking they'll be, they'll be afraid of saying saying a stupid thing well, that, that makes a lot of sense because I am in a long distance relationship with somebody in the UK right now so I am experiencing all that right now so so, just wanted to know a little tidbits because I'm trying to improve the relationship and, you know, communication is key. So, we've been chatting a lot and we're having a good time together. Well, also, also try and send a gift once in a while. I sent her a Toblerone. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. She's been doing that for me lately. I, I've yet to do it yet. I'm, I'm going to plan on doing it. That's just, that's yeah, just, just ask, ask them what I'd like to experience and just send a care package. That's what I was I was thinking about that. But she's she sent me stuff for my birthday and Christmas, so it was kinda cool. Um So how you must have had a big culture shock when you came to the US for the first time. Like, how was the experience from living in the UK for a long time and then moving all the way to the US and now living in the US? I'm still it's been two years now and I'm still getting used to the fact that a dime is smaller than a nickel in size. It confuses me because a five pence piece is smaller than a penny. So it's hard for a ten cents piece in my head to be smaller than a five cent piece. The amount of times I figured I got the right amount, like, no, that's not. I have to remind myself, no, that's not ten cents. That's five. You idiot. Uh, yeah. Everything else is like a far as. The two biggest things, like I don't, I kind of want to say I'm annoying. The ones I just don't like. I don't like the fact that if the tax, I mean, yeah, to pay tax and all that. I know. It's just when I pay one dollar for something, I want to pay one dollar for something. Not like in the Florida it's seven cents tax, one dollar seven cents. I hate that. In the UK, when something's two pounds, you pay two pounds because the VAT is already added. Mm -hmm. That annoys me because I'd rather pay so pay someone what pay someone an exact an exact amount that's actually worth rather than hulking around a whole pocket full of change. 
And the other thing that just annoys me, annoys me is just some people do not understand my accent. Yeah. I, I'll, because I've actually learned how to drive in the in the US. I've been driving for over a year now, and I'm still get a bit get a bit nervous and scared when I have to change lanes on the highway. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not fun. And like I'll be driving, we we'll go to a drive-through, and I have to repeat myself like four times for something because they don't understand what the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> like we went to Sonic, and like they had their like fifty cents corn dogs. Like you know what? It's cheap. It we're hungry. It's lunch. Let's get some. I was like, can I have um, two corn dogs, two combos? No. My wife had to lean over and shout into the intercom, say, saying exactly what I meant. Jeez. And it's not. I, that's just not. That's just not a freak occurrence. That's like nearly all the time. Like three out of four times, they don't understand what the fuck I'm saying. I'm speaking English. It's the same fucking language. God's sakes. Listen. I, I know, even though I know I have an accent, because I've had like well, 30 people ask me where I'm from because I recognize a British accent. I don't think I have that deep or that thick of an accent to a point where you can't hear me. Yeah. Interesting. So... Because there's a whole slate of things, you know, difference between the U.S. and the U.K. I mean, I mean, man, you've, I mean, I think, oh, you had you had one of your fr- friends come over from the U.K. and you sh- showed him a Walmart and you go through one of the aisles and it's just seeing the cereals. That could the same thing happen to me. That's the reason why. <laughs> my 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 visit here in 2013, we went we went to a Walmart because we were staying in a hotel and wanted some breakfast cereals, right? I walked down, it's like, God, it's like fucking Candyland. In the UK, we, ba- we barely have anything. It's like always cornflakes or oatmeal or Rice Krispies, just bland stuff. Like, it's a, it's like a miracle once you actually get Honey Nut Cheerios or, fro- or Frosted Flakes. In, in the US, oh, you got Cookie Crisp. You got like nine different varieties of freaking Cheerios. You have 10 different varieties of Special K. There is so many, so many varieties, and even varieties that don't even exist in the UK. We don't have pebbles in the UK, fruity pebbles in the UK. So, so many, even the cookie, like a bunch of Oreo flavors, a bunch of pop pop, pop flavors that don't exist. In the UK, there's only like three flavors. You have strawberry, you have chocolate, or you have apple. That's it. And apple flavors don't even exist in the US. How the hell is that possible? It's just how the culture is. It's weird. Yeah, eventually, eventually my visit was like, you know what? Sarah just, every time she thinks about it, she fucking giggles. Eventually we just picked up a mu- the fun size multi packs. And I uh, can't remember what Ju- Ju- Junior and Mike, I can't remember what they, they did. I think they just two gobsmacked and counted every variety there is. It's like the best thing to do. Just bring you bring someone over from the UK, show them Walmart, and show them the cereal aisle. And say, you can only pick one. Yeah, I feel like we're that. <laughs> There's so many. Um, that's hilarious. So then, the stuff I noticed on your channel, you do a couple of podcasts, at least, I've noticed. Like, I know since you're British, you like Doctor Who, and you talk about Doctor Who with your friends, which is cool. Mm. And, uh, Who's your favorite doctor? Ninth. Christopher Eccleston. Like, yeah, he was only in it for 13 episodes, but he was the one who introduced me to Doctor Who, because when, uh... when I, the first episode I saw was episode three. I missed the first and I missed the second episode. Uh... But episode three is like, uh, when, it, when it was on, the whole house was quiet. We all sat down and watched it. And my mom loved that. Like, whenever Doctor Who is on, it's the most peaceful time of the entire day. But, yeah, I was upset when he actually left, but they, when I learned why, it's just like, I understand, like, we're not too sure whether or not Series 1 was going to continue afterwards, but eventually it did. And plus, he didn't want to stick around for so long, like, one season's enough for him. Yeah, that's understandable. It's, 
for me, it was 10. I think I introduced you through 10, so 10 was just amazing. David Tennant, my god, David Tennant. Um, yeah. uh, so then, then I think the one that I probably know the most is uh, the podcast where you guys talk about Sonic Boom, the cartoon. And mm. one of my friends, and your friend as well, Jaime too, James Sullivan is on there, and then you get, he's a Sonic fan, and uh, how do you, like, gather, you know, it's like fans of the show, it's like, hey, you want to do a podcast? Let's talk about the show, let's talk about the show, right? Is that, is that, is that how it goes? Kind of. First, it was just me and Nikki, like, we, aha, like, I think it's like, kind of before, yeah, I think it was just before the item box started, which is by which was originally called Blue Bar Item Box, it's just a mini podcast of things. Mm-hmm. Usually, usually Sonic info and news. Um, just like it was just me and Nikki talking about the first few episodes, and eventually, eventually James asked, "Can you go do a podcast of the show? Can I join?" I was like, "Yeah, sure." I guess I guess I get a third opinion on this. I'm just me and Nikki spices things up. Uh, we had his uh, uh, eventually in the last two episodes, two episodes of, se- of the season one podcast. We got Nikki's friend Jack because he's a big fan as well. Um, we have started with season two, just haven't got around to editing it yet. Right. But it was it's just a fun little thing to do since like we did did Doctor Who, did Red Dwarf, and mm, that's right. yep. now now we're doing. Sonic Boom and so, like the, f- the unfair thing is we I was going to call it the Sonic Boom cast but someone else already took that name. Ah, oh, damn! I hate when that happens. It was a good name. It's a good name too, but I don't blame him for taking it. Mm, yeah, it's kind of so. Sad. Now I have the most long convoluted Sonic Boom TV review podcast. <laughs> Rolls right off the tongue. Yep, it sure does. It's kind of the same way when I started started doing my podcast with the guys uh i called it cinema royale because i looked at two movies off the shelf it's like oh you take a cinema royale and it's cinema cinema royale then i looked online i was like wait there's another podcast named cinema royale god damn it but you know what mine's the most popular one ah (laughs) bastards didn't like say i think one of my episodes like oh there's another podcast named cinema royale and that's it nothing else happened from that it's just like all right you guys have a fun time with me um so would you do like other podcasts would you like do more podcasts besides the sonic boom one like you know go with other shows or even video game related stuff um far as any anything video game related depends really the only other time we've actually did a podcast review was talking about sonic runners and sonic dash 2 Ah. and Sonic Runners, I just had a lot to say about it since they came up with version 2, which completely nerfed everything. That game's now discontinued, but it was it wasn't a good it was good, then it then it made it shit. Okay. It it it, it, it wasn't Sonic Team's good idea. It, it wasn't. God. When it comes to What is your favorite game of Sonic? That's a trick question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of it's <laughs> very trick question. I, I I can't say I really can't because on one day I'll say you know what Sonic the Hedgehog, Mega Drive first one, that's the best one, love it, and like a week later I can be playing any other games. You know, you know what Sonic Rush Adventure is better, and eventually like you know what Unleash is really fucking good. It's underrated. I will flip flop every single freaking week, and I, I'll even every day, and I will not give a dif- a definitive answer of what my favorite Sonic game is. But but again, the best one that always comes to mind is always Sonic One Eight Bit, since that's my first Sonic game, and it, I really can't I nothing really bad to say about it. Well, that's understandable. So, what are your thoughts on the new upcoming Sonic game that's coming on Nintendo Switch? Which one? Uh, there's, there's more than one. <laughs> there's more than one. Wait, there's more than one? I, I, all I know is Sonic Mania. What the fuck? Wait, there's another one? <laughs> yeah, Project Sonic 2017. There's no title, but that's the project name. 
it was announced for the Switch before the Switch was even announced. Oh shit! Okay, I didn't even know that. God damn. In the trailer, they in the trailer they they at the bottom it says PS4, Xbox One, and NX. Oh. So that was that was a thing before the Switch was. It was it was it was confu- it was questionable whether or not Mania would be a release on the Switch, but eventually they announced it. As uh, far as Sonic Mania, I am looking forward to it because it hey, it's a two D Sonic game. Who doesn't look forward to a two D Sonic game? Over than over than that narcissist who didn't like Sonic Four. Mm-hmm. Sonic Four wasn't bad. Okay, it was it's just underrated. It wasn't it's not great, but it's not bad. Uh, it looks fun. Made by the same same guys who made the remasters on like one two and cd which they are phenomenal especially i i can only i can only attest to sonic cd sonic one and two i can only go by gameplay footage since i don't have a tablet device able to play able to play them i mean it could still i could still look at them but i'm not paying my paying, paying for them especially especially the tablets may not be my wife so i'm not taking her over a tablet I'll, I'll find some way to get them. I'll just nick someone else's who downloaded it. So I think Mania looks to be really fantastic. Like the animation looks good, the but I'm still dubious about it being. Hey, it's Classic Sonic again. Remember Classic Sonic? Yeah, five years ago. And also the fact that it seems to have a seems to have more classic stages than new ones, which. And if you're gonna make a new game, make a new game. Don't remind us of Green Hill again. And Project 2017 can't say a lot about it since there's not much to know about it, <laughs> other than the fact that again there's classic Sonic in it. Uh yeah. Um. So. Um. Uh... Is there any upcoming projects you're working on right now? Anything you want to tease for anything coming up? Um, aside from a see the episode one of the season two boom podcast, um, also have a top seven coming out in the next probably tomorrow or tomorrow tomorrow this recording or next couple of days. Depends on when this comes out. Well, and which is about. One percent away from edit finishing editing. Uh, over and uh, eventually next month I'll have another segatorial out on another sub on a different subject. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so would you ever consider like making videos up on the uh, previous Sonic animated shows? Maybe I don't know. I, I feel like that's something you, you could talk about, you know, like you could talk about Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the uh, Sad AM, um, God damn it, I'm blanking on the, the third one. Undergr- underground. Underground, fuck yeah, fucking underground with <laughs> siblings. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, all, voice, all voiced by Jalil White. Oh yeah, good times, man, good times, God, I love those shows. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I mean, Sonic Boom is new, and everyone wants to see their reactions and such. As far as the classic ones, a lot of people seem to have a firm belief of what they have like, and you know, you know, I don't think there's much in the way of classic. It's an it's an idea, but I'm not too sure whether or not I would follow through with that. Yeah, it's just you know something to think about because it's just Sonic related. You know, I mean, um. I know you're all about video games, but like when it comes to movies, what do you? Uh, what was the first memory you had when it comes to movies in general? I don't really know. My mind seems to be jumbled. Um, I do remember trying to watch the Jungle Book, and it turned out to be a porn film. <laughs> I wish I was making that up. Oh, t- God! Oh, oh! It's just like I tried look because I know what the VHS looked like. It and this is quite typical as well. If I remember, I the Jungle Book VHS, I peeled the sticker off the front of it, which I was like six at the time. Which I know a lot of people do with porn 
upon VHSs as well to make sure like oh take take it off that way the kids won't kids won't know what it is or parents won't know what it is. So I thought that video was my Jungle Book VHS. It turned out to be a porn film. <laughs> um, uh, I really don't have. Uh, that's just one one of the memories. The earliest one I don't know, but I do know mm-hmm. that I just look. I loved the hell out of the film Turtle and Hooch starring Tom Hanks. Oh, me too. Oh. And that's not a film you show kids, but I loved it. Yeah, exactly. Oh. It always it always makes me cry. It always does. Me too. It's just like ah, oh, such a good, like, ah. Oh. It, 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 it's a dumb plot. It's basically an episode of Walker's Texas Ranger. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Yep. I can't remember who actually brought that up, but thanks for ruining that. And um, well, it's fun. It's so... because it was if one's for Turner and Hooch, you want to have Tom Hanks in Toy Story. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They they did they used the dialogue from that movie to, for the test animation, you know. And, yeah. uh, the car, don't eat the car. Oh, you stupid dog! <laughs> you stupid dog! Oh, God, I have that on D- DVD. It's like oh, one of my favorites. And uh, it's it's weird how that that got popular and it started a trend of like police men with dogs. <laughs> Because then you got yeah, like yeah, yeah, the, the K nine series. K nine with Jim, Jim James Belush, Jim, Jim Belushi, and then the Chuck Norris oh, film, oh, Top Dog. Oh my god! But it was interesting too because Turner and Hooch actually eventually uh, had a pilot uh, ready set to make a TV series out of it, and uh, they ended up making. Like a pilot for it, it didn't air at all. But it had Tom F. Wilson from Back to the Future playing Tom Hanks's role in the show. It was like weird, but I mean, Disney's like, yeah, make a Turner and Hooch show. It's like, where you would, where would you go with that? Like, weird. Yeah. Um. Because there's just a lot with movies like I could talk about, but um, yeah, hopefully you are you're with Maker. Uh, not anymore. I know you were with. Um... I was with Maker until last August, and now I'm with Screenwave Media. Ah, that's what it was. Screen Screenwave. That's what it was. I was trying to remember what what it was you were with. Because you were do, mm. doing that thing, and yeah, I remember now. I mean, it's a hobby, right? Is it is it just a hobby, or are you trying to make money off it? it I class it as a hobby. I happen to make money off. Ah. It's, it's just if you view if you view in video making is like it is it does take a lot of practice to actually make it, especially even like even my artwork I consider a hobby. Just I get paid commissions for. But as soon as you look at look at a hobby as work, it becomes boring and tedious. Like it's kind of like I try to set myself deadlines and schedules, and eventually I just top, I just wore myself out. Like I did it for about a month, like two months, and I just wore myself out. Eventually, it's like you know, set the schedule, just do it whenever. Um. So it's like when when I try you view it as work, it, it like I said, it just becomes tedious. It's a chore. Like you have to get up and record. You have to get up and write. You have to drag yourself into the editor and just spend all day editing. And even even then, the editing is a practice. I'm still learning, which is fun at fun at one point. But at the same time, editing's not fun. It's never been fun for me. Okay. But. But it's not. But again, it's not something I view as work. It never does. I can joke about saying going back to going back to work, going back to work an hour and all that. But it again, it's just it's something. It's a fun hobby I enjoy doing. If I happen to get paid for it, I happen to get paid for it. Mm-hmm. If it helps me, if it helps me buy lunch and you know maybe one or two one or two games every so often, then fair enough. Cool, cool. Uh, so how did you? Uh, end up meeting Morgan online for the first time. When when was that inedible meetup? Like seeing Morgan, Chen with Morgan for the first time. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, scratch that. It, 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 it might have been back. 
early, like, late 2011. Uh, no, it actually was, like, mid-2011. It was introduced again in the Tales of Pitara audio drama. Mm. And then she was just, like, just having been fun to talk talk to. It was, like, we're colleagues, let's talk more, let's hang out. Uh, eventually, uh, eventually, I think we became a bit... I don't know why, but when I... On during my bir- my birthday during that year, I was very fucking depressed. I don't know why. It's just on my birthday, I just broke down. Just like, fuck, I'm becoming it, nothing's fun anymore. My birthday is another day in the fucking year, and went out, got myself a pizza, got some booze, and I called up Morgan. It's like, hey, it's my birthday. I'm feeling depressed. Do you want to watch that show you've been talking to me about? Can't remember what it's called. It started, it had it was like adult oriented, but had puppets, mongrels, I think it was called. And we spent like a few hours doing that. And I think since then it's just been on and off chat, and eventually just friend, friend, friendship. Just like, hey, let's do, let's have a Skype call with Mike and whatnot, and just bullshit for like four hours. Uh, yeah, he's he's good shit. He's a good friend, indeed. Mm-hmm. Is, it, is there anybody that you have not collaborated with that you would like to collaborate with in a video in the future? I really don't know. A lot of people I wouldn't mind hanging out or actually working with having to be people who won't even read their emails. Um, as of right now, no. It's like There were a few people I had in mind just like, to have guest guest voice work on my stuff, my show. Mm, okay. Like I had my wife had Mike Jaime Tude, and the Matt from Tales Channel, which is one of the biggest collab Sega, one of the big, biggest um, Sega channels there is there is on YouTube, actually do voice voiceover for my Blue Blur series, mm. and I've been basically just get, occasionally get a voice get a voice eyes on there. Been tempted to ask a few people whether or not they would actually want to do voices on that. Over than me working with others on their work. I don't know, I don't, don't have any no ideas right now. Okay. Just, um so how did how did how many question how many uh how are you uh, when it comes to the Sonic community, how did people receive your work? And because you probably chatted with a bunch of other fellow Sonic YouTubers out there, there's a ton of them besides you. So did you? Surprisingly, as far as big YouTubers, there's only like three. Right. Um, uh, as far as the Sonic fan community, they seem to be well received on my work. I rarely get the the hater or bullshit comment. Mm. So, I'm actually quite surprised by. On DeviantArt, I got quite a few. But they all all from, all from the same kind of comment. Because I prefer this shipping over your shipping, and therefore you are wrong. I've been through that that song and dance so many freaking times. I can do it in my sleep. But as far as YouTube, I did uh, contact. Like I said. Matt from Tales Channel is a big Sonic YouTuber. Uh, like I said, I got him to voice on yeah. my, one of my videos. Uh, there's also the Sega Scourge, who is part of the Sonic show, and I frequently contact him. And there's also Gamer Guy Seven Aces, who's also another Sonic theorist and Sonic gamer. So, a bit. If I, if I was the biggest one, like Kobani, um, not nothing, nothing really there. So, would you be excited to see a live-action Sonic the Hedgehog movie? You mean the one, the one they're actually making? Yeah. Are you excited for that? Not really. This it, is it's like, oh, it's live-action and CGI combined, you know, like the Smurfs. If you make it like the fucking Smurfs, I will end you. It's like, on the one hand, it's like, I can sign to see that because it makes sense. But on the other hand, it's like, we have... So many games that show 
it better off in a cartoony world. Sonic Unleashed got it right by having a kind of a Disney Pixar kind of look. Why can't you do that? Because the, the Power Rangers movie is coming out soon, and mm-hmm. it looks like shit. Oh. It looks like absolute crap. Oh my god, you know... Uh... And I love Power Rangers. <laughs> Fuck that movie. The trailer's like, oh yeah, we found... Oh, these are delinquents. Oh, it's dark and gritty. Oh, hey, we got powers from these power coins. The Power Rangers and Mighty Morphin did not have civilian powers. That wasn't introduced to the Disney era, and that's why the Disney era was kind of sucked. <laughs> so that's why Operation Overdrive sucks so much. <laughs> not just the writing, it's just... Well, it's part of writing anyway, but still. I mean, you get Brian Cranston as... Z- Z- Zordon. Zordon. That's like... That's like... That's like the best one, but even then they kind of fucked him up by having the, you know, a wall, like one of those kind of that needle kind of yeah face thing that you put your hand on. It's like here's an, here's an impression of it. Mm-hmm. It looks like one of those. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then you got Elizabeth Banks playing Rita Repulsa, and who looks like a dragon, looks like a monster of the day. <laughs> we have Goldar, which is like the big baddie. It's like no, Goldar was a fucking general. He wasn't the big baddie covered in gold. Like, yeah, he was covered in gold, but that was more like armor. I mean, the freaking 1994, the the 94 and 95 movie got it got it better, and that was non-canon. That's another thing I totally, completely forgot about about you. You like Power Rangers? How did you? get into Power Rangers, like, it was that, because I don't think in the UK, they it was the U, US thing, and I don't, how did it get? It, it did start showing the UK, it was on, IT, I think it was on ITV, ah. it was, it was, it was a, oh, CITV, it was a channel segment, eventually it was on Fox Kids, because we got a uh, cable, ah. off that, I don't know which one, and it came to a point where it was... I wanted to watch Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, Satyam was out there in a the time. My mm-hmm. brother Robo wanted to watch Power Rangers. Oh. And depending on who got home first, had the remote, and they got their show. Damn. So it became mostly Power Rangers. And eventually, eventually um, I decided to like it more. Um, I mostly got into it during Season 2, which is why I prefer the Thunderzord over the Megazord. Okay. Cool. And I watched it, kind of fell out of it. Eventually came to a point where I just started hating Power Rangers because it wouldn't fucking stop. I was like, what's this Mystic Force? What the fuck's this shit? It's still going? RPM? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Eventually, I got back into it thanks to Linkara with his history of Power Rangers and I thought, you know what? You know what? This will be fun to watch. I'm like, I remember liking Power Rangers. I don't know why it's, it's dead now, so let's see what happens. He, he, he reignited my love for Power Rangers again. Hmm. It's, it the only way I want to, I just kind of want to, I just kind of want to thank it, hurt him, and then thank him. <laughs> and the only way I can do that, I think, is kick him in the bollocks and hand him an ice pack. <laughs> That's what I want to do. It's like fuck you, but thanks anyway. And thank, and I'll, because of that, my wife has been getting me some Legacy Power Rangers stuff. I got Megazord, Tigerzord, Dragonzord. The gold and silver original Morphers, the Dragon Dagger, and Saba. Uh, not, not to mention the 25 plus Morphers I've got from 93 onwards. Uh, you're starting to become one of those Power Ranger collectors. Um, I'm not going out for every single one. It's like there's six versions of the movie Morpher. Mm-hmm. Individual colors. Like, I don't want every Morpher, I just want the coins. So, uh,. What is your favorite season of uh, Power Rangers? Uh, Mighty Morphin Season 2, followed by um, Lightspeed Rescue. Oh, okay. Okay, so, yeah, Operation Overdrive, which is, is the, probably the worst out of the bunch. Yeah. By, by far, yeah. I, uh, yeah. 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 Even the crossover special was shit. Yay, Adam! Boo everyone else! So, when uh, Power Rangers in Space, I believe, crossed over with <laughs> Ninja Turtles Next Mutation, how <laughs> how did you react to that? Like, 
I was actually a fan of that show. <laughs> <laughs> oh I actually, God. I I actually watched Next Mutation. Oh, I saw the first two films. I didn't watch the. Th- I might have, I think I might have seen the third one. So basically, I was like live action turtle show. That's great. I remember liking Venus, but right now looking back, I don't know why the fuck I liked her. <laughs> I think because it was just like a different dynamic at the time. I'm like, it's a new turtle, yeah, and it's a female. Like we never, I never seen that before. Minus the uh, Mona Lisa from the orig- original uh, animated series. Yeah. But looking back, it's like, yeah, she is the worst fucking female character ever, and don't ever do that again. Even even the original creators put a precedent saying, don't introduce any female turtles. <laughs> so the crossover for me at the time was, like, the most fun thing ever. Oh, it, it's just the most, like, a blast, like, whoa, Power Rangers and turtles, whoa, fucking awesome. It would have been a lot better to have a crossover VR troopers. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, uh, so many crossovers, but so much potential. So, are you a turtle fan in general? Um, not heavily. Like, I enjoy turtles. I I do, I do have a love for them, but it's not. Oh overly shown like my love for Sonic and Power Rangers yeah. I'm see that's why I spaced out because I was like thinking I was surprised you haven't have you made any videos about Power Rangers I I only have like three videos on my YouTube channel about Power Rangers I think that's yeah that's right okay I was just uh, wondering two, one of, one, the first one was me using my morphers and just doing the action doing the morphing actions to them Second one, exactly the same thing, but I got a lot more of them. Uh, and the third one was actually recreating the actual morphing, sequ- morphing sequence with the uh, lightning bolt and the ring with electric behind them. Uh, okay. Which... That was a that was actually a bitch to actually create. Well, well, yeah, but you know, it's probably worth it at the end to see the final product. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about the comparisons I have between the original. And the legacy versions of the Saba and Tiger Zord. Oh yeah, that's right. Just trying to, because because people, who, if you're listening to this, like he's got a lot of content. Like go to his YouTube channel. Like he, there's so many to comb through. Like there's lots for you to watch, and it's worth the time because you got everything from video games in general, Sonic, Power Rangers. You got this, that, and the other. And it's just, I mean, you're. It's like right now you're at like close over like over 7,000 subscribers and it's just like that is just wow you retained an audience you know people will enjoy what you do yeah I hit a niche area with the Sonic stuff the Sonic stuff gets a lot of views which is not very surprising well yeah it's just like like I said it's like I enjoy making the videos it's like I want to do this and I do it let's move on yeah it's always good to, uh, you know, do what you'd like to do and, you know, and, you know, people should actually check out your stuff because not, sure, you got a big enough following, but I just wanted to highlight you and you're just a great person and hopefully you succeed you. in more videos in your future. Uh, I've, got, I've got plans, I've got scripts. I've got plenty of review scripts I've barely touched in about four years. I went through my documents. I'm like, what, 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 what's this? It just says untitled. Oh, it's a review I didn't. I com- did like three sentences for. I completely abandoned it. Jeez, so many videos, so little time. But you know, that's just life. Mm. How how is the balance between l- just having your life and making videos? It's kind of complicated. Like. On the one hand, spending time with the wife, spending time together, is quite a presence. And you have, on the other hand, it's like, I, I like, especially with YouTube's demand for more content, it's like it was a quite it's their algorithm right now. The man's like, people put up a video every single day. I tried to, like I said, I tried doing that for like two months. I crashed out. I had a complete meltdowns like i can't fucking do this anymore my videos suck i can't do it um 
uh, finding the right balance is hard because one day like I'll just spend like six hours just making a video, and at the end I could like I just regret doing it because I didn't spend any time with my wife. Or as other times it's like I'll spend like a few days in a row just Netflix and chill, which is not the dirty version. That's literal <laughs> what it is. Okay. <laughs> A lot of people say Netflix and chill. Oh, you son of a! Oh, you you dirty motherfucker! It's like no, it's literally Netflix and chill. It's oh, just on like it's just sitting on the couch watching shows. That's all it is. Sexy stud muffin, you. Well, I'm married. I get every right to do that. Exactly. But, and I'll spend three days doing that. In the back of my head, it's like you know you got a video you've got you've got. Ten seconds edited done, so I think you want to want to do that. It's like I know, but I'm enjoying myself. And it's just finding that balance. Like I don't know, some days on, some days off. It's I don't think I'm I'm trying to I'm I've asked like a couple of pe- couple of YouTubers who I know are married how they do the balance theirs, and I didn't get any replies yet. Eventually, I think I just like just make the best of it. Just find the right, just find time in between. So, do you, what kind of advice would you give to anybody who's just starting out making videos, whatever it be, you know, what, what, what advice would you give, you know, just to make videos and becoming a YouTuber? Well, first of all, don't see it as your only job. You can't, you can't expect overnight fame, just keep going. Uh, and just enjoy, just enjoy what you're doing, even if you get like one or two subscribers, just know, like, one or two people actually care enough to subscribe to you and watch your content. Deep doing it for those people. Eventually, it, eventually it will build up over time. You can't expect, like, I make one viral video and I get 10,000 subscribers in one, in one week. It doesn't work like that. Some people it does because they actually corner the market somehow. Like the thousand degree knife thing. Like, what the fuck? Overnight complete bullshit what will happen i get this really hot piece of metal on plastic it will melt you dumb fuck <laughs> what happened what will happen do this it will explode but find something you enjoy doing and enjoy every time doing it and if you feel like it's been too much to step away and just come back to it when you feel it's right and again even if you get a few subscribers it's a few people who care enough to watch you and do it for them but don't do what they want you to do do what you want to do by the time you become doing something that they want you to do you become a puppet and believe me that is a really shit experience So, but what would the, I mean, they're giving you, well, have you got, like, feedback off your videos to improve yourself, or would you, like, how would you... The, the most common feedback I get is, some people can't, still can't understand me. <laughs> and I've changed microphones so many fucking times, it's unbelievable. Usually because these things break, but other times, it's like, I'll look back on my old videos, and even I can't understand myself. <laughs> I mum I mumbled back in 2010, 2000 level eleven, yeah. and sometimes when I come back to a video, come back to editing a video, and realize I need to add a add a line here, I got a new microphone, I record on that, and it sounds completely different. In my Kingdom Hearts zero punctuation video, I quite completely forgot about that one. Um, there's a line in there I added, and it was a completely different microphone, and you can tell instantly it sounds completely different and my bitboy review which i oh yeah i actually had the developer of bitboy contact me oh i i bitboy is a game but basically it's a little puzzle game which goes through the errors of gaming 8 4 bit 8 bit 16 32 64 128 and each one, new visuals or a new gimmick gets introduced every in every era. Fuck all changed. The only thing that changed was the visuals. And I ripped that game to shreds. 
and the developer contacted me and said I was the only one who actually made actually had who actually saw the game for what it was, and he enjoyed my review of it. I gave it a one point five out of ten, <laughs> and he enjoyed my review. <laughs> And he also, he, and the same developer, it's still, it's still going on. It's still make, his games have gotten a lot better since then. He actually gave me a free copy of his newest game at the time on 3DS. Mm. Nice. Have, have you had, like, other contact from some, some, like, famous people besides that? Like, I think, how did you even get, I know there's Ken Pontiac? How did you... Ken, Ken, Ken Pontac, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how did you... Ken Pontac, yeah. How did you get associated um, with him? James and Mike were talking about meeting Ken Pontac, and they were going to watch, uh, do a little commentary on his episode he wrote for Thunderbirds Are Go, a reboot series of the classic Thunderbirds. Mm -hmm. I said, I actually asked, can I actually join in? If I can, it's fine. They contacted him and he said, it's, a, it's fine, you can come in. And I talked to him about, and I, and I joined him and we talked to him about a few things. A few things I'm not allowed to disclose because he asked me not to. Okay. And also Sega has asked him not to as well. Right. So that's how I eventually asked, can you have your address? I want to send you something cool. And he sent me the um, st a copied storyboard of, uh, uh, the can't remember the episode, but out on a limp i think episode title and that's one of my favorite episodes of happy tree friends because ah. no, that was pretty cool i remember that and all you guys were just like doing that um yeah that's 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 really cool so uh i think that's it i am trying to think i don't yeah so people people who are listening to this just go follow dan go He's on social media. He's on Twitter, Facebook. Go follow him, like him, and then subscribe to his channel. He's got great content. Just go and just support him. Like, he is worth the time. So, Yeah, I risked my neck playing Sonic 06 again. I hope you're happy. <laughs> He's doing it for you, people. He's doing it for you. <laughs> God damn it. He's... Oh, that game's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing it for you, and you better support him, goddammit. He's going through drama right now with the game. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, thank you for coming on to talk to me, just about yeah, everything. And, uh, yeah, just I'll leave all the links to his social and all the YouTube stuff in the description below. Clickly click, and uh, thanks for listening, and hope you enjoyed this interview. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>